Secure boot can certainly be useful for security if it's misused, if it's implemented in a way that doesn't provide full control for the user, then it can be used to restrict user freedoms. But if implemented in such a way that the user has full control over which keys are trusted and which binaries will boot, then yeah, it can be a worthwhile improvement to security. My system is set up so that it only trusts things signed by the Fedora project and so will refuse to boot anything else, including, for instance, Windows. The main difference between the Linux Foundation loader and Shim is that Shim implements a full uh, public-private key cryptography implementation in some ways very similar to how Secure Boot works itself. The Linux Foundation loader will only load binaries with an authorized hash. So that means that it's taken the specific binary, it's performed a cryptographic operation on it, and then it's saved a record of that specific binary. The Linux Foundation loader is simpler, it's more straightforward, but it then means that there are certain use cases that it supports less well. The Samsung bug is interesting because it's a pure UEFI bug rather than it being a secure boot bug. It's in fact also present on Samsung, some Samsung laptops with Windows 7, and so which don't implement secure boots at all. The Samsung bug is the worst in some ways because I haven't found that many other bugs that allowed you to render a machine unbootable, but it's not unique. I did find some other firmware bugs that made it possible to do much the same thing, uh, end up with a computer that would refuse to boot even if you cleared all the settings, um, if you removed all the hard drives. Uh, we saw that with in fact, a range of Intel systems, but in that case we were able to easily add a workaround to the kernel in order to prevent users from triggering this bug accidentally. All the bugs we know about are, as far as we know, fixed in forthcoming machines and maybe even the current firmware version for some machines. But there are still a lot of machines out there that have the bug in their firmware. And we have workarounds in the kernel to make it impossible to trigger these, but unfortunately at the moment the workarounds to prevent Samsungs from being, from being damaged actually currently make it impossible to install Linux on some other computers. You can't damage them, but you can't install Linux on them. A fully secure system is one where it's not possible to load any untrusted code in the kernel as well. And that means dealing with module signing, it means dealing with k-exec, it means dealing with certain things involving hibernation. And so far, we haven't come up with very good general solutions for those. We've come up with some solutions that work in special cases. Hibernation is actually one where we have a generic solution but haven't yet implemented it. So on say, Fedora, hibernation is currently disabled by default on secure boot systems, and that's something that we're hoping to fix in the near future. As for secure boot, currently Microsoft do not require that secure boot be enabled on server hardware, so it's not as immediate a concern, but there are still questions about, for instance, how to deploy keys in a secure boot world in a server environment, because um, a lot of servers are installed by being put in a rack and then that boots off something else. There's never a point where anybody manually installs the operating system on them. Core boot is an alternative to UEFI, uh, in theory. It's actually possible to build UEFI on top of core boot, so you could have a core boot system that still used UEFI and still implemented secure boot, but it could be done in a way that was completely open source and free software. Even if vendors did start using core boot, I don't think that would actually make many of the problems I have to deal with go away, because a lot of the time it's not in the original firmware code, it's in the extra code that the firmware vendors have added on top. So it would still be possible to, even when, with using core boot, it would still be possible for hardware vendors to implement secure boot and to still have the same restrictions on user freedom. And they might still have bugs that were just as dangerous. On the Chromebook, you have the choice of either booting things that aren't signed by Google or booting anything. It's not straightforward for a user to enroll their own keys. Um, this means that if the user wants to change the keys from being Google's keys to their keys, you actually have to disassemble the system completely, move a jumper, which then lets you access some flash that previously you couldn't write to, write your new keys, replace that jumper, put your computer back together, and then it will boot anything that you've signed. Whereas with the 
UEFI Secure Boot, uh, it's possible to just add a new key and then, if you want, even remove the old key. So Google lets you either have security or freedom, but not both, whereas the UEFI implementations let you have, by default, security, by default, freedom, or you can set up your own freedom-respecting security.